السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Good morning everyone. Uh, as we all know that we hear about the latest updates in regard of the infection prevention and control standards of the airborne infection isolation room or air or negative pressure room. So today, inshallah, we'll have an overview and session in regard of these uh, uh, updates of these standards and also we'll give you a tools and methods in regard of how to meet these standards. So uh, my name is Ahlam Al-Amri from the Senior Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control. And it will uh, will join with me, uh, Mr. Adel Anazi, my colleague, and he will give you the second part of this session. So let's start together. So we have a specific outlines in regard to today our session. I will give you in uh, at the beginning introduction about the topic, and then we'll explore some common terms related to these standards. And also we'll give you a glance to the current updated uh, air standards or the airborne infection isolation room or negative pressure room standards. And we'll discuss in further the risk assessment in the infection control and how we'll predict the required number of the air by using a specific formula. And finally, how we'll approve our documents that related to this risk assessment and formula and how we will um, start or initiate a formal agreement. At the end of this session, inshallah, we'll answer to all inquiries and all uh, questions accordingly. So as we all know that the airborne infection isolation room or negative pressure rooms are an important tool for the infection prevention and control in the hospitals and healthcare facilities. The aims of this room to protect our patients, our visitors, and as well as our heroes, the healthcare workers, from the exposure to the potentially harmful disease, which is related to the airborne infectious disease. And these rooms are commonly used to isolate the patients and providing the care of those patients with contagious airborne disease, such as measles and tuberculosis or TB. So uh, we have a specific chain of infection. And in order to break down that, the chain of infection, we have to place those patients in this type of room. So the isolation uh, facility or this type of uh, room aims to control the airflow in the room so that the number of airborne infectious particles, which is really small, less than 0.5 microns, is reduced to a level that ensures the cross-infection of other people within the healthcare facilities or hospital is highly unlikely. So this is it will be achieved through uh, control, the quantity and quality of intake or exhaust air, as well as maintain a different air pressure. And usually this type of room, we are providing a really a minimal uh, pressure that at um, a negative pressure values between adjacent areas and designing a specific airflow patterns for a specific clinical procedures and diluting the infectious part particles with the large air volumes, as well as um, we have a specific environmental control by using the uh, HIPAA filters in order to filtrate this uh, contaminated air. So in brief, this type of room, actually, we are providing a negative pressure room in order to avoiding the transmission of the airborne infectious agents. So um, we have to, before we are explaining the updated in the standards, we have to uh, understand or identify some common terms. So uh, first of all, what is the meaning of standards? Standard as a statement of excellence or an explicit predetermined expectation that defines the key functions, activities, process, and structures required for the healthcare facilities to assure that the provision of safe and quality care and services. So we have a common quote or says that saying, standards protect you from the low quality experiences. And usually our patients seeking the healthcare facilities and trusting on us to provide them the safe and quality of care based on those standards. The second term that always we have to explore is the airborne infection isolation room or air. And another term of this term is the negative pressure room. So the negative pressure isolation room or air is a single occupancy patient care uh, room used to isolate the persons with a suspected or confirmed airborne infectious disease. And in some cases, the patient it will be uh, under the droplet precautions, but because of the aerosol generating procedure, we have to place them in this type of room. 
Another term that always we have to face and always in the infection prevention and control field or the interested healthcare workers about the infection prevention and control, they have to uh, deal with, uh, they heard about it. So which is about the infection prevention and control risk assessment. So the risk assessment is a careful examination of events that cause infections, harms, or even death to the patient, staff, families, or visitors, and as well as the whole healthcare facility. So um, after the brief introduction about the negative pressure room or air, and also by exploring the most common terms, we have to see what are those updated uh, standards and related to the air. So uh, particularly here, we'll speak about the SIBAHI as well as the ICA standards. Uh, SIBAHI, they have an ASR, which is essential safety requirement, which is related to the infection prevention and control standard number 15. And the standard saying that, or stated that, facility design and available supplies support the isolation practices. And the uh, recent update, it, uh, it was under the substandards of this ASR standard. So the Saudi um, Central Board for Accreditation of the Healthcare Institution, they updated recently the standards related to the IBC 15, and particularly to the substandards 15.1 and 15.2, as well as the other uh, critical care units um, standards related to this uh, particular airborne infectious isolation room or negative pressure room. So IBC 15.1 state that there is at least one negative pressure airborne isolation room in the emergency room and one in the patient wards. And it will be depending on the facility scope of services. And the IBC 15.2 state that the infection prevention and control team decide the need for more negative pressure airborne isolation room in any inpatient care wards. So you will see here that it was a, um, a significant modification uh, uh, in regard of this substandards when are compared to the previous uh, substandards, which was uh, uh, providing a specific number or um, accurate number that it's uh, not fair for almost of the healthcare facilities. So the infection control audit or ICA actually uh, in domain, particularly in domain B and in the element number three, and particularly in the element P3.17 uh, or sub element number 17, that stated that the required number of airborne infection isolation room should be predicted in each hospital based on the facility risk assessment or based on the nationally approved standard. Both this uh, auditing actually is conducted by the surveyor or auditors from the infection prevention and control in order to ensure this um, significant standard are met in the healthcare facilities in order to avoid the transmission of this type of the infectious agents. So uh, we have to explore or uh, explain in further what is the meaning of the infection prevention and control risk assessment and uh, what why this uh, specific tool is really important when we are talking about the uh, negative pressure room. So the infection prevention and control risk assessment uh, usually used to managing the risk is a core part of every healthcare facilities and a core part or tool in every infection prevention and control uh, department governance and leadership and affects all activities and involve factors inside and outside the healthcare facilities. These factors include the human behavior and must be incorporated in all levels of the organization, including the infrastructure, building maintenance, administration, the equipment required, and work process according to the hierarchy of control frameworks. So in brief, so, or in general, the infection prevention and control risk assessment, it's mandatory and it sh should be um, available in each healthcare facilities or hospitals. And it's conducted by the infection prevention and control department annually or when required, such, such as if we have a specific pandemic like um, COVID-19 or epidemic, or if we have changed the scope of service of our healthcare facilities or any predicted changes that it's happened inside our healthcare facilities, we need to renew our infection prevention and control risk assessment in order to identify the main risks that it will be, uh, we face it in our healthcare facilities and implement or construct the annual plan or action plan in order to prevent those risks. 
So usually the risk assessment must assess and score each potential risk factors. So we have a specific risk factors eliminated, uh, actually is uh, stated or uh, appointed in the risk assessment based on the aspect such as the potential impact, the probability of the event or condition occurring, and as well as the organization preparedness. And each of these factors, we have to score them in order to identify the high risk, the moderate risk, as well as the low risk, in order to construct our annual plan to confine those risks. So uh, the same risk assessment must be discussed in the infection prevention and control uh, committee and must be approved by the all committee mem members and particularly the hospital administrative in all hospitals so it's not uh, accepted that the members of the committee don't know about the risk assessment of the infection prevention that conducted by the infection prevention and control um, department as well as they have to discuss the action plan or annual plan based on those risk assessment So this is an example um, or template of the risk assessment, and usually we have a different uh, templates and various uh, tools that you can use it for the risk assessment. So here we can see how we have a specific indicators that we have to assess, and based on that, here we have a specific transmission for the airborne infectious disease such as the TB among the healthcare workers in the emergency department due to the limited resources such as the negative pressure room. And this particular event or risk, the score it considered the highest. So if we have the score here, it can be, it's not in order, but in the annual plan, we have to start with the highest risk in order to uh, construct the action uh, to avoid those events and risk in the future. So we have to uh, put in your mind that every infection prevention and control, they have to conduct the risk assessment mandatory and uh, should be uh, implemented and constructed by all healthcare facilities, regardless if they required a negative pressure room or not. So if any um, uh, uh, practitioner in the infection prevention or control and control department or any healthcare workers ask me this question, if we don't need any further or if we don't need any a new uh, negative pressure room, do we need to construct the uh, infection prevention and control risk assessment? Yes, it's mandatory, regardless the needs or not for the negative pressure room. So the risk assessment, uh, from the beginning, we have to agree that the risk assessment is supposed to be mandatory and compulsory for all healthcare facilities. And based on that, if we need a specific, or if, uh, if we identify a specific uh, high risk um, transmission of the airborne infectious disease, at that time we need to use a specific formula in order to predict the required number of negative pressure room. But the risk assessment is mandatory for all. So um, I mentioned in the previous slide that we'll use a specific formula. So in the previous slides, we mentioned that we have a high risk for the TB transmission among the healthcare workers in the emergency department due to the limited number of negative pressure room. And uh, at that time or in that scenario, the patient were placed in a single room uh, without any environmental control or without use of the engineering control uh, by using a specific negative pressure room and lead to the transmission and influx of the airborne uh, infectious agents. So uh, we face here high risk, so we need to use a specific formula. So that this formula, it will be explained in further by my colleague Adil, but now I will give you the main indicators that we required in this formula. So the following formula can be used based on specific indicators. We need to gather a specific data in order to use this formula. The first thing, the average number of suspected or confirmed airborne infectious cases in the previous three years. And the second indicator, the average length of stay of the confirmed or suspected airborne infectious disease in the previous three years. So these, those indicators, we have to collect them from various resources or from various sources, such as the admission office, the bid management, the laboratory data, from whatever the place that they gain the sources, we have to gain the sources in order to use the formula. And from the formula, we will predict the required number of negative pressure room if we have a specific high risk indicator. 
So the average number of suspected or confirmed airborne infectious cases are the average number of patients with the suspected uh, before the uh, lab confirmation or confirmed airborne infectious disease during the last three years, as well as the, the rate of patient hospitalization in a negative pressure isolation room during the last three years. And also here, the, the last one, the total number of days it will be fixed. No need to gather this information because it's already a fixed uh, indicator. So uh, here's some example of the sources of data, such as the laboratory records, the bed management, the hospital admission, from the electronic services of the healthcare facility system that we can gain these data in order to use the next formula, which will uh, explain, inshallah, by my colleague Adil. And uh, now I'll introduce Adil to complete the next session of using of this formula. السلام عليكم سعد الله صباحكم بكل خير thank you أحلام for the perfect explanation for the first part of the lecture today إن شاء الله we'll talk about the formula how we will make this formula and how we'll be calculate as my friend or my colleague أحلام she explained for you how we will be take the information how we will be collect the information and what is the indication that we need طبعا زملائنا باذن الله احنا راح نتكلم الان عن الفورمولا واللي هي المعادله اللي احنا راح نستخدمها في حساب الريكوايرد اير بون فيكشن ايزوليشن روم في الهوسبيتالز مثل ما انتم شايفين وي شود بي يوز ذا افريج نمبر اوف ذا سسبكتد اور كونفيرمد اير بون فيكشن كيس فور ذا لاست اوف ذا بريفيوس 3 ييرز اند وي ويل نيد تو بي ملتيبلاي باي ذا افريج لينث اوف ستي ان ذا بريفيوس اور لاست 3 ييرز اند ذس وي ويل بي ديفايد باي ذا number 365 that means the number of the days per year and this formula inshallah will be give us the required number of an airport in the hospital uh, we should be mentioning here that we should be used or we need to be include the cases that in the hospital and they are already under a droplet precaution but they are placed or put under the airborne isolation precaution because uh, due to the uh, anticipated or they will be have any uh, air solo generating procedure. أي حالة عندنا هي already كانت من هو داخل منشأة صحية أو مستشفى هي كانت تحت اللي هي droplet precaution ولكن من أجل إنه already uh, في ال air solo generating procedure أي إجراء مثير uh, للرذاذ uh, تم وضع هذه الحالة على ال airborne isolation precaution لابد من إنه يتم إضافتها average number of the suspected or confirmed airborne infectious uh, cases. راح نتكلم باذن الله بعد شويه عن اللي هو طريقه اللي هو الحساب ونتكلم عن بعض الامور راح نتكلم عن اللي هو specification uh, uh, for بعض الحالات ايضا راح نتكلم عن documentation and approved for the documentation. Uh, thank you for احلام uh, to explain the first part of the lecture. Now we'll be talk about the formula and how we will meet the required number of the airborne infection isolation room inside the hospital. This is the formula. You can see it. It's contained about uh, the indicator that uh, Sister Ahlam, she has explained before. It's have the average number of the suspected or confirmed airborne infection cases in the last three years. And this will be multiplied by the average length of the stay in the uh, previous or the last three years. And it will be divided by the total number of days per year. That means it will be divided by 365. Uh, this uh, will be give us, as we mentioned, the required number of the airport infection isolation room in the hospital. But we should be mentioned here that if we have any case, and this case is already under uh, droplet isolation precaution, and at the same time they place this case uh, in uh, or under the airborne isolation precaution due to or it have any air solo generating procedure we should be add and included inside the average number of the suspected or confirmed airborne fictitious cases uh, we will be having inshallah next uh, some exercise about this formula for the specific uh, situation we should be known that we need only admitted patient even if it is suspected or confirmed airborne infectious uh, uh, cases during the last three years, 
they will be only uh, included inside this formula. So we can be calculate and we can be estimate the required number of the negative pressure isolation room for the healthcare facility for the, for the patient care area. And also, what about the new uh, hospital? Or if we have any newly operated hospital, we should be know that if we have any newly operated hospital, and this hospital is less than three years, we should be use the minimum required number of the negative pressure airborne room, and it should be available inside the healthcare facility or inside this healthcare facility. Uh, they should be have, as we mentioned, the minimum required number of negative pressure airborne or uh, isolation room, they should be have one in the ER and one in the patient ward until they will can be or they will be have enough data and they can be collected for the infection prevention and control risk assessment. Today we'll give them uh, the uh, appropriate uh, numbers of the required airborne isolation room. What about if we have any suspected or confirmed airport infectious case? And this case will be attended or they will be go to the emergency department, but is not admitted inside the hospital. For this case, we will be not uh, including inside uh, the formula or inside the uh, average number of uh, the cases. No, we should be known that the confirmed airport infectious cases will be entered to the emergency department, but he is not admitted to the hospital. He should be not included in the calculation of the required number uh, for the uh, airport infection isolation room in the healthcare facility or in the hospital. Also, we have some another uh, specific situation like the data that it will be already coming from the OPD will be uh, not included also in the formula uh, to calculating the required number of the patient airport uh, negative pressure room. The data that it's coming already from the OBD also we will be not be including inside the formula. As we mentioned before that the data for any patient suspected or confirmed and he uh, uh, entered or he attended to the emergency department but he is not admitted inside the hospital as we mentioned before we cannot be used for the calculation for the healthcare facility the required number of the airborne isolation uh, room but we can be including this or using this data only if we need to be calculate the need uh, for more negative pressure uh, isolation room inside the same department. That means if we need to be calculated for the ER department, we can be used uh, this data for the general or for the general calculation for the healthcare facility. As we mentioned before, we will be not including only if we need to be calculated for the same department for the ER, we can be including this data. And with Allah, we will be have practice, we will be have one scenario, and we will be, inshallah, calculate the required number for the uh, ex uh, hospital together, inshallah. Uh, this is our scenario. We have uh, infection prevention and control department. They are conduct a risk assessment for the ex general hospital, this hospital with capacity of 500 capacity at the end of the December of uh, 2023 in order to they will be constructed and they will do the annual plan for the next year 2024. Also the infection control department or the same department uh, they have challenge in the placing airport infectious cases in the hospital due to the shortage of the airborne infection isolation room uh, and also as uh, Ahlam, she mentioned before, there is, uh, or there is, uh, or the risk assessment show that there are a high risk of airborne infection transmission, uh, transmission due to the limited resources of the airborne infection isolation room. Uh, what is the next step we should be doing? And the scenarios, سابقا اللي هو طريقة جمع المعلومات طريقة اللي هو الانديكيتورز المستخدمة في الفورميلا ولكن عندنا الآن هنا مثل ما تم شايفين انه يوجد لدينا مستشفى مستشفى عدد الكابسيتي فيه 500 سرير وريد الزملاء عندنا في الانفكشن كنترول حابين يعملوا يعني والبلان للسنة اللي هو 2024 عندنا مثل ما تم او شايفين انه ذيري زي تشالنج 
سنجل اير بورت ايش بس كيس في عندنا اشكاليه وتحدي في تلويم المرضى ذوي اللي هو او المشتبهه او مؤكد اصابتهم بالامراض المنتقله عن طريق الهواء الريسك اسسمنت العام عمله او تم عمله ولكن الان احنا نحتاج انه نسوي ريسك اسسمنت ونسوي اللي هو جمع للداتا فيما يخص اللي هو حساب اللي هو الريكوايرد اير بورت فيكشن ايزوليشن روم في البداية مثل ما ذكرنا سابقا we should be calculate the data we should be have the average number of the suspected or confirmed airborne infectious cases for the last three years we have uh, 2020 we have already 250 uh, uh, average number it is 250 2021 200 and 2022 300 the average as you can see 5 for the 2020 and also six after that eight for 2022. احنا هنا جمعنا الداتا مثل ما انتم شايفين المعدل اللي هو جمعنا له ثلاث سنوات مثل ما هو مذكور لكم سابقا لابد انه يصير عندنا 20 20 مثل ما انتم شايفين الافريج نمبر اوف سسبكتد والكونفيرمد اير بورن فيكشوال كيسز كان عندنا 250 سنه 21 200 سنه اللي هو 20 22 300 الافريج واضحه امامكم لسنوات 20 20 كان خمسه اللي هو ايضا 20 21 6 و 20 22 هو ثمانيه. الخطوه الثانيه بعد كده ايش اللي احنا راح نسوي؟ اوريدي لابد من انه احنا ناخذ معدل الافرج مثل ما كان مذكور داخل اللي هو المعادله. We can see we calculate the average for the number of suspected or confirmed airborne infectious cases طلع معنا اللي هو الافريج 250 هو عباره عن جمع السنوات الماضيه الثلاثه 250 زائد 200 زائد 300 آه تقريبا اللي هو نقسمها على ثلاث سنوات من اجل ما يطلع عندنا المعدل فاعطانا الافريج هو 250 الافريج ستيم مثل ما واضح امامكم تم جمع الاعداد الخمسه زائد السته ايضا زائد ثمانيه تم قسمها على عدد السنوات هذا هو ثلاثه فطلع الافرج عندنا اوف اللينث اوف ستي 6.33 الان اور ناو وي نيد تو يوز ذيس افرج اند وي ويل بوت ات ان اور فورمولا وي كان كالكوليت ذا ريكوايرد نمبر اوف ذا اير بورن فيكشن ايزوليشن روم للمستشفى اور فور ذا هيلث كير فاسيلتي الان what is the required number that we need for uh, this scenario as you can see here we put all the data that we are collecting and the average inside the formula it will be like that the average number of the suspected or confirmed cases for the last or previous three years it will become 250 multiplied by 6.33 the average length of stay for the previous also last or for the previous three years it's become 6.33 divided by 365. <تصفيق> في السنة اللي هو 365 بيعطينا عدد. هنا العدد اللي انتم تلاحظونه اعطانا اللي هو 4.33. هنا في نقطة مهمة جدا لابد نعرفها جميعا بانه اتس فيري امبورتنت تو راوند ذا نمبر تو ذا نيكست نمبر. ذات مين ذا ريكوايرد نمبر فور ذا اير بورن فيشن ايزوليشن روم فور ذا هيلث فاسيلتي اكس اور فور ذا هوسبيتال اكس ات شود بي 5 or infection isolation room مثل ما ذكرنا انه يتم تقريب الرقم الى الرقم الذي يليه عند اذا حصل معنا اي كسور في الرقم احنا طلع عند الناتج 4.33 معناته اوريدي عدد الغرف اللازم تكون متوفره او اللي هي ريكوايرد هي خمس غرف لهذه المنشاه الصحيه Transfer formula agreement. In some situation, we will be have a, a formula agreement or transfer formula agreement. We will explain here. We should be know that if we have any uh, healthcare facility and this healthcare facility, it has a specialized scope of service, like it is the long term facility or cardiac center, and they doesn't have all the airborne fiction isolation room. 
it is not available. And we know this for this healthcare facility, it is rarely they will be have any airborne infectious cases. What they will do first, they should be adherence to the uh, infection prevention and control measures, and they should follow the infection prevention and control measures. And also, they should be or the patient they have it, it should be transferred as soon as possible to the facility that have already an airborne infection isolation room or there is an airborne infection isolation room available and also it should be based on the transfer formula uh, agreement that means they should be have a transfer uh, formula agreement with other healthcare facility and this healthcare facility it should be have uh, or there is an available airborne infection isolation room inside this uh, healthcare facility and also we should be know as we mentioned, they should be attended to the infection prevention control measures. They should be the time waiting for the transfer of the patient. They should be put this patient or place the patient and this patient, he should be masked patient. That means they should in, uh, instruct the patient to wear a mask. They will be placed masked patient inside private room with, uh, so they should be uh, closed or with door closed all the time. And they will be use the portable high efficiency particle air which we know all of about like the HIPAA filter machine if it is uh, available and they should be know that the patient he should be continue wearing the mask all the time or all the duration of the time spent inside this uh, room until they will be transfer. This is about the transfer formula agreement for the healthcare facility or the specialized healthcare facility. Uh, also, we have some healthcare facility that already they are providing healthcare to the patient, and this patient he is not remaining or he is not be uh, still overnight inside this healthcare facility, or he will, they doesn't have any uh, department like hospital, uh, outpatient clinic, urgent care centers, imaging centers also. All of this healthcare facility, they uh, are. Uh, it is not required from them to. They will be have or construction of uh, construct airborne infection isolation room, but they should be have an agreement as we mentioned before with another healthcare facility that they have already the airborne infection isolation room. Uh, documentation. Uh, or the document approved, we know that all the document it should be approved and all the document it is related for the airport infection isolation room uh, prediction required number and the uh, related action and annual plan uh, should be constructed by the multidisciplinary team and also it should be discussed and approved by the first, it should be uh, discussed and approved by the infection control committee and it should be done for all hospitals and also it should be uh, discussed and also approved by the hospital administrative and uh, that means it should be uh, uh, approved by the infection control committee and also it should be approved by the hospital administration. This is our uh, reference. It is the uh, prediction guide for the required number of airborne infection isolation room. It's uh, GTIPC, Ministry of Health, it's for year 2023, the first version. You can be visit this link in the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control a website. And we find all the guidelines. Thank you, slides. So this is our uh, references. And actually, it's one reference that related to the prediction guide for the required number of airborne infection isolation room. That is the first edition. And usually, actually, the standards, it's updated uh, frequently. So uh, we need to hear from you guys from the healthcare facilities uh, if we are using the prediction formula and give us the feedback related to any uh, um, tools that already uh, mentioned in this guideline, as well as any experiences that you faced in this um, uh, standard, particular standard. So, and we'll open our um, mic in order to, uh, to answer all the inquiries and the questions that posted in the chat. But give me a while, please. طيب uh, we have question here في حال عدد المرضى أقل أو شبه مصفر هل أحتاج 
ورفع عزل سالب الضغط طيب احنا قلنا في البداية مرة انه الريسك اسسمنت مانداتوري تمام عشان نتفق ان الريسك اسسمنت اذا كان مكتوب فيها انه الانفلوكس حق الاير بون ترانزميشن انفكشن مرة كان لو فما يحتاج مني ابدا اني انا اضيف اي نقطة بريشر روم اتس اوكي okay. ما يحتاج نكتب في نستخدم الفورمولا بس لازم نذكر في الريسك اسسمنت انه انا ما عندي احتياج خاصة في الانوال بلان الخاص بالريسك اسسمنت There is another question that how to calculate the average length of stay. The length of stay as Adel mentioned in his formula, and we have, for example, in the last three years or in the previous three years. So, for example, if we are talking about uh, 2021, 2022, and 2023, you will get the length of stay from the bed management or admission office, whatever the source of data. And you will uh, add the first year with the second year with the third year, and then divide by three. This is the average. And then you will use this average in, uh, uh, in the formula that posted in Adel's slide. طيب في سؤال يقول العدد الناتج يكون شامل ل المرضى اللي في المستشفى. طبعا احنا نقدر نسوي فورملا في الكريتيكال اريا خاصة فيهم. سواء اي سي يو ولا نيكو ولا بيكو نقدر نسوي الفورمولا في الطوارئ ونقدر نسوي الفورمولا في الامبيشنت نقدر نحددها كذا نقسمها كاتيجوريز عشان ما تصعب علينا تحديد عدد الغرف والديستريبيوشن اوف ذيس تايب اوف اير بون انفكشن ايزوليشن روم طيب اللي عندها اتفاقيه نقل هل راح يكون مطلوب منها عمل غرف عزل ولا تمشي على الريسك اسسمنت وان احنا ما نحتاج عزل ترى هو المقيم في الاخير او السيرفير او الاوديتور سواء كان من سباح زملائنا في السباحي او الاي كاوديتور دي نو اوريدي هاو تو Uh, um, to uh, uh, use your risk assessment to identify the indicators. يعني أنا لما أروح اللاب اللاب عندكم ديتا وأشوف إنه والله كان عندكم تي بي كيسز كثيرة لا معناته لازم غرف عزل. ما يكون بيت كباستي لما يكون السكوب اوف سيرفيس حق المستشفى جنرال مثلا او يكون المستشفى فيها بروفايدنج ذيس تايب اوف سيرفيسز فور ذوز بيشنت لا طبعا هو في الاخير المقيم آه اليه تقييمه الستاندر احنا يمكن اعطيناكم التول هاو تو بريدكت ذا نمبر هاو تو ميت ذا ستاندر اذا كان ما يحتاج انه النمبر ذا انه كان ما عندكم اي احتياج وكتبتوا في الريسك اسمنت ما يحتاج وشاف المقيم ما يحتاج تستخدمون الفورمال اجريمنت اذا كان عندكم يو فيس ذيس type of uh, patient in the few in the previous years عشان to avoid transmission in the future بس هي في الاخير مقيم يعرف كيف يطلع الداتا اف ان المستشفى كان يحتاج او لا لازم يكون الريسك اسسمنت اكوريت ولازم الريسك اسسمنت يعكس الواقع او رياليتي او اليونيك كاركترستيك اوف هيلث كير فاسيتي من الجيوغرافيكال لوكيشن من السكوب اوف سيرفيس من البيت كاباسيتي من الكاتشمنت اريا قاعد يخدمهم الناس اللي هناك بوبيوليشن من النمبر Uh, and type of the airborne infectious disease هناك كل هذه الأشياء يحطها المقيم في عين الاعتبار بحيث نشوف هل risk assessment actually is um, conflicting the real uh, unique characteristic of that hospital or not طيب في أحد سألني كمان سأل في الشات إنه في سؤال هنا في الشات طيب سخينا أقرأه إنه في أيام COVID-19 كان عندنا حالات كثيرة result in rating procedure يعتبر انه تنحط في النيجاتيف بريشر روم في هذه الحاله ايش نسوي آه في الحاله هذه اذا كان احنا بانديميك البانديميك السيتويشن حق البانديميك والابيديميك تتغير كل الحالات ولازم يكون الريسك اسمنت موديفايد بيز اون ذا سيتويشن سواء كان عندنا انفكشوس ثريت ات ناشونال ليفل او انترناشونال ليفل هذاك الحاله شيء ثاني مختلف تماما عشان كذا احنا ذاكرين في الدليل بين قوسين آه على حسب بريدكتد تشينجز راح يتغير ريسك اسسمنت فاحنا ما نحط في اعتبارنا انه هذاك كان فيكس هذاك كان بانديميك فما راح يكون عاد الحالات نفسه في سؤال عندنا هنا يقول هل في صيغة موحدة للاتفاقيات أو عناصر محددة لها في اتفاقيات اللي هو بنقدم صحيح في عندنا 
اتفاقية موحدة الاتفاقية الموحدة هذه مثل ما ذكرنا موجودة داخل النهوة الدليل اتفاقية واضحة ومعتمدة من قبل الإدارة العامة لكافة عدد المنشآت الصحية وهي بصيغة موحدة موجودة بصيغة موحدة للاتفاقية صحيح وايضا زي ما ذكرت اخوي عادل انه الاتفاقيه هذه موجوده واحنا ما نلزم اي منشاه صحيه تلتزم بهذه الاتفاقيه ولا نلزم اي منشاه صحيه تلتزم بالفورمولا اف دي هاف ذير اون فورمولا اور دي هاف ذير اون تمبلت دي كان يوز ات دي ار ميتينج ذا كرايتيريا فور ذوز ستاندردز طيب طوارئ الزام يكون له غرفه عزل واحده المستشفى لسا ما انشاه لان ما ما فهمت السؤال فهمت طيب. طوارئ آه. في البدايه زميلي ناس يقول لازم طوارئ الزام يكون غرفة عزل واحدة لأن المستشفى لسه ما أنشأ شيء في البداية مثل ما ذكرنا احنا أي منشأة هي جديدة أوبريتد ستيل أقل من ثلاث سنوات تكتفي بالمينيمم ريكوايرد من اللي هو الـ Airborne Infection Isolation Room مثل ما ذكرنا هو أقل أو المعيار الأقل هي عبارة عن غرفة واحدة في الطوارئ وأيضا غرفة داخل اللي هو الـ Inpatient هذا في خلال اللي هو إذا كانت المنشأة مشغلة جديدا لها اقل من ثلاث سنوات، لكن لازم نعطي بعين الاعتبار بانه متى ما اكتملت عندنا ثلاث سنوات، متى ما اكتملت لدينا الداتا من اجل انه احنا نقدر نسوي عليها تحليل الداتا، جمع الداتا وعمل الكالكوليشن ففي هذا الوقت بعده لابد انه يتم عمل اللي هو الكالكوليشن العدد الكافي من غرف العازل. طيب we have another question that uh, you know it's used for droplet patients or need to change the parameters of pressure as all uh, evidence or references uh, and schools in the infection prevention and control state that it's not allowed to change the parameters or engineer controls of any pressure of any room so it's not allowed so you cannot uh, change the negative pressure to, me, to mutual or neutral pressure and we change it to the positive no it's not allowed If negative in that room used for the purpose for negative pressure, you have to keep it for the negative pressure. You cannot change the pressure as all. آه في عندنا سؤال هنا يقول لي هو لكل كم سرير بالعناء نحتاج غرفة عزل سالبة زميلي إحنا مثل ما ذكرنا إنه ما عاد في شيء اسمه كم عدد الغرف أو بناء على عدد الغرف لا في risk assessment risk assessment يتم عمله مثل ما ذكرنا سابقا بناء على risk assessment. فورمولا والكالكوليشن راح يطلع لك العدد المطلوب من اللي هو الاير بروفيشن ايزوليشن روم داخل المنشاه الصحيه ومن نعيد مره ثانيه مثل ما ذكرنا لا انت هي منشاه جديده فقط تكتفي بالمينيمم ريكوايرد من الاير بروفيشن ايزوليشن روم لكن من الان خلاص ما عاد في شيء اللي هو نتكلم عنه ونقول كم كم سرير في العنايه وكم سرير في الطوارئ لا الان جميع الريكوايرد او العدد الكافي لغرف العزل سالبه الضغط ومبني على الريسك اسسمنت ومبني بالاهميه على الفورمولا والمعادله الحسابيه لحساب عدد غرف العزل سالبه الضغط للمنشاه. طيب في سؤال مذكور هنا اذا كان عندي خمس غرف عزل هل احتاج اتفاقيه مع مستشفى اخر؟ نرجع نقول ستيل بيز على الداتا الانديكيتورز اللي ريكوايرد نجمعها اللي هي عدد الاير بون Uh, suspected or confirmed cases في الثلاث سنوات الماضية عدد ال length of stay في السنوات الثلاث سنوات الماضية وتنقسم على 365 يوم على أساسها هو يبين لكم إذا كانت تحتاج زيادة أو لا لازم تجعون الداتا أنا عارفة أنه it's maybe يكون a heavy task بس لازم يكون عندكم داتا مجمعين عشان يكون شغلكم أو أساسه وال infrastructure صحيح من البداية إن سمحتي لي برضو إحنا من حاب أضيف على اللي هو الاتفاقية واللي هي أو الأجريمنت فورملا مثل ما ذكرنا سابقا بأنه هو موجود في الدليل صيغة معتمدة وموحدة للجميع أيضا لابد نعرف أنه المواصفات أو من هي الهيلث كير فاسيلتي اللي إحنا حنسوي معها أجريمنت لابد نعرف أنه إحنا أحد أهم الشروط أنه يوجد لديها اللي هو غرف عزل سالبة الضغط تعمل بشكل جيد وبكفاءة عالية أنتم ممكن ترجعون اللي هو الجايد لاين والدليل او الجايدنس وتشوفون فيه الجميع اللي هو ما تم ذكره من ناحيه اللي هو الفورمولا اللي هو الريسك اسسمنت نتكلم عن الاجريمنت احنا بنسوي معاه اجريمنت اللي هو الشروط المطلوبه في الهوسبيتال اللي حنسوي معاه اجريمنت وايضا تحتوي على معلومات عن طرق اللي هو كيف طريقه النقل المريض وانتظار اللي هو المريض في المستشفى
الله يعطيكم العافية جميعا يمكن uh, still we have a various question but I need from you first guys to go and read the guideline in regard of the prediction guide for the airborne infectious um, isolation rooms and then uh, we'll do a frequent educational sessions we will not stop at this point actually we have a frequent inshallah educational session to support the healthcare facilities in order to meet these standards because it's as we all know Sibahi is our standard as well as ICA domain um, uh, B standard so please um, go back to the guidelines read it and listen to the recorded lecture for today inshallah and we will upload it uh, inshallah soon in our uh, website and in um, a YouTube channel as well as the, uh, we have a Twitter space uh, that we have uh, this week on Sunday uh, so in last Sunday you can uh, also go and uh, listen to the recorded uh, space in regard of this topic and we will do frequent inshallah session uh, and we'll have um, uh, pioneers and um, a focal point as a TOT or tra train of trainer inshallah in different regions at the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and they will support you guys to meet this standard so thank you so much and if you have any question please or kindly do not hesitate to contact us at any time through our uh, channel of communication uh, we have a website gdibc.sa you can uh, go to the website and find all the resources and recorded uh, materials as well as you can uh, send an email to us uh, through the gdibc dot, uh, at moh.government.sa and we'll answer to you uh, in further thank you so much and again we are sorry for the technical issue and we will edit this inshallah recording and we'll disseminate it to you guys to have a further um, uh, to listen again and to understand the full uh, the whole um, the methods and tools regarding of the negative pressure room. So thank you so much and have a lovely afternoon.